Hi there, in this video I'm going to tell you some initial and important points about PLC memory, scan cycle, and different operating modes. In the next video, I'll start Semantic Manager software to learn how it can be used to program S7300 and 400 PLCs. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller-based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Okay. We program PLCs to control industrial processes. Therefore, they need to store electrical equipment status by receiving their electrical signals. So, let's see how a PLC stores this information on its memory. Many electrical devices have only two modes. PLCs can store these two modes on a bit of memory which is the smallest unit to store two numbers, 0 or 1. Also, many devices have more than two modes. For example, an industrial motor can have three modes, clockwise rotation, counterclockwise rotation, and also its stop mode. Analog devices, which work with analog signals, require more bits as well. In consequence, PLCs use more bits. 8 bits together, which is called a byte, can store 256 modes. In other words, one byte can store a number from 0 to 255. See the table. I can store 0 with 8 zeros, 1 with 7 zeros plus 1 at the end, and similarly 2, 3 till 255. Note that. If I change my rule to store numbers, I can have another range. For example, let's use the last bit to determine the sign of numbers. 0 for positive and 1 for negative numbers. In consequence, and such as the new table, I can store negative numbers too. Numbers represent industrial parameters such as speed, level, temperature, and so on. If we need more precision, we can use two bytes, which is called a word, to have 65, 53, 6 modes. Note that there are a lot of standards to save data, such as numbers, time, date, using bits. I'll explain and use them later. Now, let's see the memory structure used by S7300 or 400 CPUs. These CPUs use three important types of memory frequently. Input image memory, main memory, and output image memory. Let's start with the main memory. Well, this table shows the main memory structure. We use the letter M for that. In this table, the first column shows byte numbers. For example, M2 refers to these eight bits and also M5 refers to these bits. As you see, each row has 8 bits that are numbered from bit 0 to bit 7. As I mentioned, many devices have only two modes, and one bit is sufficient to store their status. For example, M0.6 refers to this location on the main memory. The letter M refers to the main memory, the next number determines the byte number, and after the dot, the second number determines the bit number. Similarly, we can use any bit of the PLC memory, such as M1.4 and M5.2. Okay, to use two bytes, in other words, a word of memory, the W letter is used between the letter M and the first byte number. For example, MW0 refers to the first and second byte on the PLC memory. 
or MW3 consists of these two bytes, M3 and M4. Pay attention, if we use MW3 to store a number, we shouldn't use MW4 to store another number, because these two addresses have one byte in common, M4. Similarly, we can use the D letter to use double word, in other words, 32 bits. For example, MD2 consists of these four bytes, M2, M3, M4, and M5. Now, let's see how a number like this, 7281, is saved on an address of the main memory like MW3. Note that this address consists of two bytes, in other words, 16 bits. The least significant bit is M4.0, and the most significant bit is M3.7. Therefore, the green binary numbers are stored on the bottom byte, M4, and the red part is stored on the above byte, M3. Let's see another example to store a bigger number on four bytes on the main memory. When this address, MD1, is used to store numbers, the least significant bit is M4.0, and the most significant bit is M1.7. So the selected number is stored with this pattern. Note that PLC fills extra bits on the left side with zero. All right, we can use the two other memory types, inputs and outputs image memories similarly. But instead of the M letter, we should use I and Q letters respectively. S7300 and 400 CPUs use these two memories to store the status of all inputs and outputs. Now let's see how inputs and outputs image memories are used. When a PLC is in the run mode, it reads all inputs and stores them on the input's image memory. Then, the PLC executes its program completely to determine the status of all outputs. Note that the status of the outputs on its image memory can be changed during the program execution, but the PLC updates the status of its connected equipment to its outputs when the whole program is executed. PLCs repeat this cycle to control industrial processes continuously. This cycle is called a scan cycle. Now let's see a flowchart which shows an overview of how the user program is executed during each scan cycle. PLCs have an operating system and we can load our program as the user program. When the power supply is switched on, the control processor checks the consistency of the hardware and parameterizes the modules. Then the startup program is executed once if present. Usually user programs are divided into individual sections called block, which are OB, FB, and FC. Let me introduce these blocks briefly. OB is a short form of organization block. It represents the interface between the operating system and the user program. The operating system can only call organization blocks for specific events. For example, OB100 is called and executed once when the operating mode of the PLC changes from the desktop mode to the run mode. Usually, the user program is long and complex, especially for industrial purposes. Therefore, we divide it into some function blocks and functions. Later, I'll use them and explain their differences. After the startup mode, in the run mode, the operating system first updates all PLC outputs and then reads all inputs. After that, executes OB1 cycling till the PLC is stopped. So OB1 is used to write the main program and executed continuously. Every time an interrupt occurs, the
the operating system calls its appropriate OB and then return to the main program. As I mentioned uh, in the previous slide, this cycle is called a scan cycle. For a simple program, it takes about 2 or 3 milliseconds. Alright, let's see what CPU does during these three modes. When a PLC is in the stop mode, its CPU doesn't execute the user program, but it handles any communication request, for example, a request to download a new program, and also performs self-diagnostics. As you see, in the startup mode, CPU does six tasks, named with A to E letters. A clears the process image inputs, in other words, clears the inputs image memory. B initializes the process image outputs. C processes the startup organization blocks, such as OB100. D copies the physical inputs to the process image inputs. E queues interrupts to be processed in the run mode. And the last item, F, enables the physical outputs to be changed. Okay, now let's mention the task which the CPU does in the run mode. In this mode, CPU first updates the physical outputs. Then it reads the physical inputs and updates its inputs image memory. After that, it runs the user program. This starts with OB1 as the main programming block. Also, CPU performs some self-test diagnostics in this mode. And every time an interrupt occurs, the operating system calls appropriate OB and then returns to the main program and responds to communication requests. Note that the CPU executes all these tasks cycling until the PLC goes to the stop mode. Okay, in this video and also the previous one, I've explained some initial points about PLCs. In the next video, I'll start the Semantic Manager software to learn how it can be used to do a simple project. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.